So that's a fully editable grid if you want to do each one of the cells individually. But if you'd like to edit a row all on its own, then you'd use the row edit template. Using that is pretty easy as well. So let's we'll come in here to the design mode, go into the behaviors, and what I'm doing is taking out cell editing. And instead of cell editing, what I'll do is use the row edit template. Now there's a client event that we're going to handle on this as well. And so we're going to say when the template is closed, we're going to say that this is the row is dirty. So we're doing the same thing we did before, except it's basically for the whole row. So if I hit apply and then OK, now the smart tag, when it comes up, I want to go in and edit the templates. This is nice because as this dialog says, it will go in and create a template for me. So when I say yes, what happens is it creates a template for the data that's going to be in the row. Now, I know that this table uses identity for the product ID. So what I can do is come in and just delete those controls out of the template. So when I go to edit a row, the product name and unit price will come up and it'll make it really easy for me to edit everything that's in that row showing on the grid. Let's go ahead and end template editing. And then there's just two more changes that I need to make. So we ended up taking out the product ID out of the template. So we need to come into the client bindings and remove it as well. So that the JavaScript that's uh, generated in order to take the values from the grid and put it into the input controls that doesn't run anymore. And then we also said that the JavaScript function that was going to run was going to be row dirty instead of cell dirty. So let's go ahead and run that and see how it looks. So you can see if I double click on any one of the cells, the individual editing functionality is taken away. However, if I double click on the row selector, uh, the, the row edit template comes up and allows me to make any changes that I want. So when I hit OK, you'll notice that the Save Updates button shows up again. But again, remember the value of this is that what you can do is come in and make multiple updates and submit them all at once. So when I go to Save Updates, I can refresh and we can see that all the changes that I made to the grid are now persisted. So as you can see, creating a fully editable grid using the Web Data Grid is very, very easy. And again, we use the SQL data source, but you could do it just as easily using an object data source and hook it up into any sort of business logic layer uh, in your own OR mapper or any type of setup that you have um, using the object data source. So I hope you have a lot of fun using this. I hope it makes your life a whole lot easier. So until next time, I'll be talking to you soon. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.